So good morning to anyone who's starting with the recording rather than live. We're happy to have you here as well. And if you have some blocks or something you can use in place of blocks, uh, something sturdy, a small stool, a, a pile of books and a giant can of pea protein, anything like that will work. Towels, rolled up towels are also good. And a belt of some sort, a fabric belt that we can use as well. We're going to start in our traditional manner on the floor. So make yourself comfortable on your back, on your mat. You can lie in full Shavasana. I'm going to take my friends uh, out of the picture for a while. Come on, Gracie. Let's go. Come on, Gracie. All right. Make yourself comfortable and you can lie in full Shavasana or you can tent your, you can bend your knees and put your feet on the floor and let your knees even roll, fall in towards each other, which is very lovely if you have any soreness in your lower back. So you can be here or fully extended. And of course, if you have a tender neck and you need some support under your head, that is fine too. And just begin to observe your breath, which is the tool we use to bring our consciousness back into our bodies. It's always out in front of us in the world, worrying about what's going on and taking care of business. And now it's time to invite that consciousness back into the body for a little while. And I am so glad you are here during this crazy time. Uh, so many of us have been dependent on the summer to keep us going. We, we use the good weather and being outdoors as a way to be safe around people, um, as a way to interact with our neighbors and our friends. Uh, being outside in the garden or walking or hiking or riding bikes to get the exercise we need to keep our bodies healthy, keep the endorphins pumping to our brains during this crazy time. And now we're transitioned into fall. Really felt like fall this weekend. I'm sure you all felt it with the rain and the wind and the cooler temperatures. And we are facing uh, more time of being careful, of taking care of ourselves and our friends and families by not being intimate and close to people and isolating. And how are we going to do that without being outdoors all the time? It's a big question. Uh, but I'm glad you're here because this is one place, one way that we can do this. We can be with our bodies and our friends here in this platform with this practice. And I hope your yoga practice is of use to you during this cooler, darker time we come to. And we will continue to offer ways to find that physical activity. So let your breath fill the body. Let your breath fill all the way up to the top of your the top of your lungs, up by your, your collarbones, up into your armpits and, and towards your shoulders. And when you need to exhale, as your exhale comes, let the exhale be just as deep as the inhale was full and let all that air flow out. The great power of these complex, beautiful organs, our lungs filling all the way up and emptying completely, expanding every little passage and tube, the little tiny, tiny vessel where the air can fill, keeping those lungs pink and healthy and totally functioning. 
And as you do this, feel the areas of your body that touch the floor and let them be soft, let the floor support you. Let the obligations and shoulds of the day fade away or, or just set them aside. You can come back to all of them. They will be there when the time comes. This is your time to be here in your body. And run through a mental scan of your body here and see what's going on. You probably are aware of any areas that have been bothering you recently, any places you have tweaked or overworked, any places that are sore. Give them the respect they need in this scan and be aware of them as we go through class. So, all the way through class, honor those little places that are calling to you and whatever, it, whatever some uh, asana or some motion moves towards more than just a little discomfort or challenge moves into pain, that's the time to come back out and care for yourself by retreating into gentleness for those areas that may be challenged. Now, as you're on the ground and you have this long breath continuing to move, continuing to run through the body, let's everyone bend your legs and place the feet on the floor so we can begin a gentle rock through the pelvis exploring the low back, one of those areas where the natural upright posture of the human body puts some stress and we add some mental stress there. So an area to pay attention to. Let your breath make the lumbar curve exaggerate as your belly rises and then flatten as you exhale and the pelvis tilts flat onto the ground. Let that motion begin to be as big as you are able, as big as feels good in your body today. The beginning of this work, we can start slow, or if you're feeling really open, if you've had an active week and you feel nice and loose and free, you can make the motion larger. And if you want to make a little tilt of your head back, just lifting the chin slightly towards the ceiling as you inhale, and then lowering the chin and towards bringing it towards the chest as you exhale. Just exaggerating not just the lumbar curve, but the upper curve in the back of your neck on those seven cervical vertebrae, that cervical curve. See how that feels. And you can actually take the hands <clears throat> interlaced and place them behind your head. And as you exhale, with the, you can lift the top of the body a little bit into a tiny crunch, activating the abdominals in a stronger manner. And even if you don't want to do that head lift, see if as you push the butt, the belly towards the ground, you can feel the sides of your waist pull in. Imagine there's a, a big broad belt around your waist, cinching you in like an old fashioned hourglass figure. And feel those muscles along the, the sides of your body ignite and start to fire. Just a little bit of warmth coming in here. And let's start to make this motion smaller and bring the body back to the flat of the ground and then take both knees into the chest and rock back and forth across the back of your pelvis. If you want to bring your knees towards your chest as you do this and then let them go back, you can get a journey in two directions, uh, the spine, feeling the back of the hips and the back of the body. Uh, we, I just mentioned how we look forward in our life, what's in front of us, what are we dealing with, what's next. 
and the back of the body is sometimes lost in that shuffle. So reacquainting ourselves that we have two sides, our front and our back. And feel the sacral bones as you do this. Some of us have sacrums that are really well disguised and they're muscle and flesh. And some, some of us can feel them broad on the floor. Well, we can all feel it, but it's, it's a different sensation depending on what your body's like. And it's hard to know exactly what another person's body feels like. Then take the knees in a circular motion, starting the clock face exercise on the back of the pelvis, or sometimes we can feel those rims of the sacrum well enough to know we're drawing around the triangular, triangular shape of the, of the back of the pelvis there. Take the circles in both directions and feel what's going on, feel what's going on back there. Getting to get a little warmth and action. Let's take the legs towards straight. Now that may not feel good to straighten your legs yet, but lift the feet up towards the ceiling and try straightening one leg at a time, pushing the heel up towards the ceiling. You may have to not be uh, perpendicular. That's just fine. Just depends on the length of your hamstrings this morning. And while you're doing this, as you straighten one leg at a time, circle the ankle and open and close the toes, really exploring that foot as well as the leg that's lifted. And give that leg, just uh, pull it towards your body, towards perpendicular, just as much as you can. And feel what tightness is in the back of your leg today. Again, the back of the leg from the heel all the way towards the bum. What's going on back there? Let's try that on both sides, really checking in to the back of your leg, lighting it up by stretching that heel away towards the ceiling. Again, you may want to do some more ankle circles and flex and stretch the toes. And then try both legs towards the ceiling and give them, straighten them out, but see where they land. They may, may not be perpendicular, that's just fine. They may be towards perpendicular, feel what's going on. And as you do this, then feel what's going on in those uh, flexing joints in the front of the hips, the psoas muscles and the lifter, lifting muscles, the flexors, what's going on there. Then bring the legs back in and another, another rock back and forth before you place them flat on the floor. And let's all take our arms into a T position. You may have to adjust if you have a wall close to you. Back of the hands flat on the floor, arms out into the T position. We're going to take, I'm going to take the left arm. You can use whichever side first is convenient. And take that left hand and lift it up to the sky and then all the way over to the right side. So you roll onto your right side and place your two hands together in front of you on the floor. Then try reaching the top hand even farther along the floor. Maybe just a small move of an inch or two, maybe a little more. Feeling the stretch along your shoulders and the back of the top part of your torso. And then roll back by pulling that top arm along the bottom arm and taking it all the way out to the T. And we'll do that again. It's just the beginning of those arm circles, actually. When we do those big circles on the floor, this is the first motion. You take the hand over and reach beyond the bottom hand. Then let that hand trail on the floor and back across the arm and to the open position. Let's do the same thing to the other side. Take that opposite arm. For me, it's the right over and you will, roll, you will be rolling onto your left side. Let that top hand trail in front and then run back the distance, lighting up and moving all those muscles at the top of the body. The top 
up by the shoulder blades and then take it all back over to the first side. So we're going to alternate sides, rolling those hands across each other and rolling all the way across the top back of the body. If your neck is tender here, have a care and move slowly. If your neck is really tender, it may feel better to do one side at a time and work a little more carefully. Rolling back and forth across those upper shoulders, across the shoulder blades. And the hips are getting a little work here too, but we're paying special attention to the shoulders and the shoulder blades and the back of the body. Once more each side, doing that motion that's kind of a caress of the top hand along the bottom arm and then finish in that T shape again and feel your shoulder blades flat on the floor on your back. Then take those arms, reach up to the ceiling and reach across your arms. I have the right arm on top and reach around to your shoulders. Put your hands on your shoulders and perhaps depending on how long your arms are and what you're shaped like, you may be able to reach all the way to your shoulder blades. It doesn't matter if you can or you can't, if you have room, do it. If not, just reach as far as you find that stretch in your shoulders. So now the shoulder blades are wrapping and feel how they've moved. They're not a flat on the ground, they're completely off the ground and they have wrapped around the sides of the body. Then open the arms again and feel the shoulder blades move and return to a flat position on the floor. And then with an exhale, wrap the arms the other direction. For me, that's the left arm on top. And again, reach all the way around the body as far as possible and feel how the shoulder blades have moved completely around. Those shoulder blades are very flexible, ideally. They do get stuck though. We Our shoulder blades get stuck and there's even a condition that some people call frozen shoulder where the shoulder gets very, very tight and can be fairly painful to move the shoulders. So you want to keep those shoulders in this liquid motion. Let's try this two more times, reaching around the body and then opening the shoulders all the way, tucking those shoulder blades flat under our bodies. And one more time, wrap them around the front and then take them open wide on the floor. And this time, take your arms over your head stretch the legs long and flex through the heels, reach the heels away and the fingers away. Long, full body stretch, deep breath. Let's see how that feels in your shoulders. This position reaches the shoulder blades again off the back, but instead of wrapping around the body, they, they reach up to a line on the sides of the neck. And feel the back of the body here. Feel your breath moving into the back of your body, the back of your lungs as you take a deep breath here. And let it go. While we're on the floor, we'll do the crescent moon stretch, waking up a little bit with a lateral stretch, taking the, I like to take the left hand with the right wrist and stretch it over my head the hands and feet, everything's still flat on the floor, but we're drawing with our bodies on the crescent, on the floor, the shape of a, a new crescent moon or a parentheses bracket. And letting one side of our body open as the other curves in. Send your breath, imagine your breath can pour into that long open stretch on the curved exterior curve of your body. Then reverse the position. And for me, it's the right wrist and the left hand and reaching everything towards the left. If you're following me, that's will work and keep the shoulders and the hips flat on the floor. Reach that arm up, up and away and over, over the head. Letting again, the breath pour into that open side of the body, all the way from the outside of the foot up through the whole length towards the fingertips. 
and open wide. And let's do a little bit more abdominal work before we change position, get off the floor. So sell yourself flat on the floor again with the knees on the knees lifted and the feet on the floor. Then take the knees up. You don't have to lift the legs to tabletop. You can just let the, the legs dangle. Keep the legs dangle. Take the hands and interlace the fingers and place them behind the head. And this position is always to support the neck and the head. We're not gonna lift ourselves with the hands. We're going to support the neck and the head so that the neck and the head aren't doing the lifting either. And as we lay here, let's make sure we've got that happening. In fact, if you have a block handy, take the block and place it up between your thighs here. So your thighs are working into each other. You feel your legs holding that block there. That can be a towel too, it doesn't have to be a block. And then rock back and forth again across your hips, just feeling your hips settle on the ground. If you want to take your legs all the way to tabletop, that's an option, but they're fine. Just letting them dangle down with the knees raised. And feel, with an exhale, feel the strength of your belly pushing into the floor. And again, that feeling of your waist compressing. We're going to use that strength to lift us. So with an inhale, let the belly be soft. Exhale and press down. And then also lift as much as possible your head and shoulders straight up and lower. A little bit of a crunch there. Again, you can have your, your legs in tabletop, lift straight up and down. Lift straight up and down. And if you have your legs in tabletop or even if they're just lifted, make sure that you're not pulling your legs into the belly. We're just lifting the top of the belly, the top of the body up with our belly muscles. And then let come to the floor and take a deep breath. We're going to do that same motion with a little bit of a twist. So lift and right elbow to left knee, center and down. Inhale, exhale and lift, twist, center and down. I'm going to do six more. You can come with me on this journey or come in and out as you need to. Just starting to wake up and build some fire in the belly. These muscles are so vital for our, our strength and our posture. We use them for lifting and standing, keeping our backs healthy. One more on each side. And when you've reached your tolerance or what you have to give in this motion right now, you are done and you take a rest. Let's come all of us down and to stretch the front of the body after that ab work, let's take a block or a rolled up blanket or a rolled up towel, push down and lift the hips and place that block on the flattest side. So this is a support of about three or four inches under the sacrum. And we're now in a supported bridge pose. Make sure you're comfortable. Find that nice flat part of your sacrum or the flat part of your, the back of your pelvis laying on the block. And, and now I say flat part and I know that Many of you have, have more muscle uh, back here, more flesh and more muscle. It's not flat, it's nicely curved. But under that is that flat part that we're looking for, the bone. We're looking for that bone under whatever, uh, whatever booty you possess. Now with those feet on the floor, bring the right knee in towards the, towards the belly. And it's not gonna come way in. It's just gonna lift a little bit. Uh, to keep that nice feeling of flatness on the block and stretch the left leg long. We are stretching the front of the body and this is a, a gentle stretch along those psoads and the front of the thigh and it includes the front of the belly. It's a little bit of a stretch here after the first of our ab work. 
And take a moment to breathe here and just feel what's going on with you. And bring that left knee in and place the right foot on the floor, bring the left knee all the way in so you can stretch the right side. Push out through the heel and feel a gentle stretch along up at the top, the front of the thigh and up towards the belly. Let that openness feel, feel that openness, feel that stretch. It should feel like a release, really pleasant opening. And actually like a, a release can also feel like a relief, a relief of tension. Then release the leg you have lifted, both feet flat on the floor. Let's press through the feet and lift the hips into one gentle bridge. Pressing the knees away. You can move the block out of your way at this point. Pressing the knees away, pressing through the feet, lifting the whole back of the leg is engaged, the, the hamstrings and the uh, glutes. Your weight is up at your shoulders. It should be on the shoulders rather than the back of the head. Long breath here and lift the heels, roll down through the back. And we're going to come to a seated position so you can roll to one side and take the top arm to push yourself up gently or rock and roll along the spine if that feels good to find a seat on the ground. And I know for some of you that we have a few people who have very sore knees or hips. And if this is true for you and you don't want to take time to, to build yourself a like, elaborate platform or or uh, have to destroy it afterwards, you can take a chair and sit in a chair for this. We're going to do some releases with the head and neck and working in a chair is just fine for that. Or if you want to make yourself a nice platform, we're working towards being able to sit with the knees lower than the hips. And I know that's not easily available to all of you, but that's what we're moving towards. So have something on your hips. I have a blanket. You can use a blanket and a block. You can use two blankets. You can use two blocks and two blankets. Whatever works to find a comfortable seat. And when you get to that seat, let's take a moment to line ourselves up here. See that the shoulders are reaching back towards the hips and the head is lifted with the ears reaching back towards the shoulders. And take a long breath from here. Feel the weight. Take the first breath into the hips so that you can feel the weight of your hips holding you onto the ground. And take the next breath up the sides of the body and feel your, feel your ribs lift. Lift up. The ribs don't protrude front. They're nicely relaxed into the body, but they're lifting up away from the hips, creating length in the spine. And the final breath can go, or the next breath, not the final breath, the next breath can come up into the head. And you feel the center of your head reaching up, reaching up to the sky. Also sometimes visualizing the sternum lifting works for people to help that keep the shoulders back and relaxed while the body continues to lift. Let's take the arms up and gather from the sky, bring it to your heart. So nice to have the sun back this morning after the rainy weekend. Three times in breath all the way up and through the center. And one more time up, leave the hands up now. Keep the hands reaching up and we're going to take a gentle twist to the right. The first corkscrew twist of the day, so have a care for yourself. Teaching, taking the spine around itself. The in-breath helps us to reach long and tall, keep that nice lift we just created. And with the out-breath, explore 
what motion you have around yourself. These hips are still weighted on the ground, heavy on the ground, so that the lift and twist comes through the upper back, mid back and upper back. Well, the lumbar spine is secure and strong on the floor. And again, lift up with the breath. Come first to the center and then the opposite direction, exploring what you have in the twist there. Once you do this on this side, think a little bit about your neck. How's the neck feeling? We're going to address that next. Classic places for our stress are the neck and the lower back. And heaven knows being alive in this time is plenty of stress for most of us. Plenty of questions and uncertainty. So here we take the time, lift with a breath and come back to the front to see if we can help. See if bringing the breath into the body can address some of those really difficult stresses we have placed. In, our, in, our, in parts of our body. So let's take the right arm out in front. First, reach those fingers away. Reach them towards the computer screen or whatever is in front of you. And then feel those yourself, pull the arm back and take that shoulder joint into its socket, securely into its socket. Nicely placed with those shoulders back, nice and strong in there and then open the hand all the way to the side. Let's explore what we have in the lateral motion of the head today. With an inhale, look towards that extended thumb. And with an exhale, take the head away. Inhale, look towards the thumb. Keep the top of the head reaching tall. Exhale and look away. And you may find that just this motion of your head tweaks or twinges things way down in your shoulders. And it's not abnormal. It is that accessing those areas of tension that we carry in our shoulders. And finding them is the first step to be able to hopefully help let them go. Look back towards that thumb. Now take that right hand down or the hand you had extended down all the way. It can go to a block or it can come to your lap. See if you can get that shoulder nicely placed back, the shoulder of the hand you just brought down from me, it's the right. And, and we're going to do a neck stretch towards the right. And I'm gonna give you a lot of options or it's gonna be customizable. This is your customizable neck stretch. So first look down, let your chin look down and then relax your head, let your head fall towards that right shoulder. And see if you can keep your head back lined up with the shoulder and both shoulders nicely relaxed down. The first option is how you hold your head. Well, erase. Let's take the first option of elongating the opposite arm, the arm away from the direction you're stretching, reaching it out at an angle that mimics the slant of your head. Now you can look down with your head, your chin can go down, or you can rotate your chin forward and let your ear be the area that's coming towards the shoulder. So just a tiny adjustment, but it makes a difference in how that neck stretches. And you're looking for the stretch that's right for you, an area of maximum sensation without pain. The next adjustment you can make is rolling that extended arm. You can roll from the shoulder so the thumb faces down or all the way so the thumb faces up or even a little bit back, changing the angle of that shoulder. 
So you can adjust this however you want to find the stretch for yourself. And if you find that it's hard to release your head, that you have a lot of tension in your neck and it actually creates kind of a fear or guarding, you can take this opposite arm, the arm towards your stretching tube and lift it to cradle the head. You don't wanna pull on the head, but you can lift it to support and cradle the head, which sometimes for people who have that kind of really tense, fearful pain allows you to relax a little more. Then breathe into whatever, whatever stretch you found and see if that breath, the idea of that breath flowing into your stretch can help loosen and relax those tense muscles. Then take the hand by the head and place that head back on its upright axis. And take a breath here. We'll do the same thing for the other side. You can take that first arm, the left arm forward or the opposite arm you just worked forward and reach towards the front and then plug that arm into its socket, nicely settled in that beautiful designed shoulder joint. Then open the arm to the side and we'll do the same lateral movement and see if it feels any difference now. You're going to inhale towards the reaching thumb and then exhale away. You may just have created different sensations rather than relieving any, but that may be the beginning of relaxing, is changing the flow of energy and changing how it feels. We've done this motion, but it, we've done things in between, and this is a different direction. So observe. And finish with your head reaching towards the thumb and relax that arm. Find the best place where you can keep your shoulder blade down and relax back. Best place for that hand. And then we'll design the stretch on this side. It may turn out to be very different from the stretch on the other side of your neck. You'll look, you're going to extend the opposite arm and relax the head towards the, towards the shoulder. And remember the tilt of your chin and the rotation of the stretching arm are adjustments that you can make to make this pose just right for you. All the while the hips are staying really steady, really weighted down. And the last adjustment, of course, is to support the head if you need to. Just, it's almost, it can be just a psychological support because as I say, there's so much tension in the neck that, we, that the body becomes fearful of relaxing. So this is a way to let the body know it's okay to let that head fall, let that head just relax. And breathe into whatever stretch you find. You can adjust it and tweak it as you're holding it. Keep ameliorating and improving the position. Then with your hand, support that head up. That was a long time sitting. So let's stretch the legs out front and wiggle the feet. Wiggle the feet in circles, just as we did when we were on our back, stretching and flexing the toes. And finish with those legs out front in front of you into Dandasana staff pose. And see if you can find yourself in a position where you can press the backs of your legs into the floor. Flight feet are flexed. The, um, uh, our legs are kind of rolled in. So if you have a seam on the inside of your pants or your yoga tights, see if you can roll those seams towards each other, pressing the heels away, nice tall body. Now we're in a, in a stretch right here. This is a stretch for the back of the legs. And for some of you, it may be a little much. So you can lean the body tall and take your hands in the back of you and find the right stretch for you. And just at this point, observe where the stretch is. If when you're upright, you're not getting much stretch in the front of your legs, allow 
the torso to come slightly forward and see how far you need to go with the back nice and strong and straight. We're not, we're not curving over, we're keeping the back straight. So we're bending at the hips with a long back. How far do you need to go to really find that stretch in the back of your legs and keep the legs pushing into the ground as you do this. You can allow the hands to wiggle forward if that's appropriate. Just feel what's going on in there. What happened? What happened there? And then with an in-breath, lift up. And let's, from here, let's work our way all the way to standing. Up, um, well, no, let's work all the, way, all the way to standing here. So you can take your legs into a, uh, you can roll over to the side and push up through the legs. And we're going to do a uh, low lunge. So let's leave, you, you can either leave the, uh, blanket on your mat or leave it right by the side of the mat where you can reach it easily. First of all, let's just stand up, reorient to gravity. We're finally reached our standing poses. Take some shoulder shrugs and see how it's going back there. We worked those shoulders hard at the beginning, warming them up, see how they feel. Uh, take the legs wide and give yourself some hip circles here too. We, last week we were doing hip circles in um, hands and knees and uh, in, a, in a forward, we did it in the, in the low lunge, I think. And take them in both directions, let's do them standing today. We've already done a little work on the psoas, how they feel. Uh, and then wiggle the hand, feet together. Let me see if I can get my head included. This is my constant constant battle to include my head and my feet in my yoga, my yoga videos. <laughs> uh, okay, relax the head, the shoulders down. Let's come to the front of the mat and find mountain pose there. <coughs> find all four corners of your feet. The feet are hip distance apart and the shoulders are lined up with the hips and as usual we battle to lift those lift the head and let those shoulders let those ears relax back to the shoulders long through the back of the neck top corner if you have a square head the top edge is reaching towards the back edge corner of the room with ceilings like this. The back of your back edge of your square head is reaching to fit into that nice corner. Take your hands and interlace your hands and then switch the grip. We've interlaced the hands a few times today. Let's switch the grip so the other index finger is on top. Then reverse your hands and press them away, stretching the back of the arms and the fingers. And see how far you can take that up over your head, feeling with your shoulders relaxed down. So, so you can't go, if you lift your shoulders, you can easily take it all the way up to the top. But how far can you go keeping those shoulders relaxed down? You'll feel a pull at a certain point. That's how far you can go. And you can play with that edge, play with that pull, lifting them up. It's a little bit of a stretch. Then take them all, take those hands all the way back to the back of your head and nestle them into that occipital ridge where your neck meets your head and support your head there. Now open your elbows back. Lift, see if you can press those hands into the sides of your neck and head and lift up. Lift up and back. Yeah, nice. Now feel the back of your pelvis long. Your knees are not locked. There's a beautiful little, little relaxed bend in your knees, a little micro bend. Your hips are very heavy and strong. And the, the uh, pubic bone is tilted slightly up to your belly. 
the belly is really working, lifting, pushing back. As you do this, lift up with your head. See if you can take your arms and the very top of your body into the most gentle, lifted back bend. This isn't a circus back bend. This is a really small, elegant, perfect back bend. Just lifting the sternum, the collarbones, the head, the very top of the back into this little tiny arch. The belly is strong, the sacrum and the hips are weighted down, but we're lifting up the top of the back, opening the heart, elbows pushing open and back, opening the heart, then straighten, lift and straighten, relax the arms, give yourself a wiggle. And we will repeat that uh, one more time. Take your hands and interlace them the regular way, the way that's most natural. Give them a stretch forward, lift them up. Again, cradle the back of the head. Feel the, there's a way when we do this that feels like the hands were created to hold the head this way. Just feels very natural, like they fit together really well. Again, weight the hips and the lower half of the body, belly pulls in, pubic bone lifts up so that the back of the pelvis is long and strong and lift up. See if you can lift your head up and away and then let yourself start that gentle arch back. Now, if we were circus performers, we would continue to go up and back and away, but we're not, we're just people stretching and opening our hearts, opening our hearts to the sky. Keep breathing. If you need to come out, if this is stressful, of course, come out, take a rest. One more deep breath, lift up straight and relax. I hope that felt good. Find your mountain pose. Take a deep breath here. Let's step back into warrior two. So hands on hips. I'm stepping back with my right foot. You can uh, follow me or do the opposite by mirroring me. And find the find the warrior two footprint so that the the uh, the feet aren't lined up. There's space between the feet and the hips are rotated forward. I'm going to shorten my stance here a little bit today because I'm adjusting for a sore place. And that's how we go. If you have a sore place, you adjust as well. Back, let's take the hands to the back of the pelvis, press down to feel the length of the pelvis reaching down and reach around the front that kind of embracing a uh, hand motion we've been doing. So if you could close those front hip bones forward and then take the, take the arms up. We have to wear warrior one. I said warrior two, I'm sorry, we're in warrior one. Take the arms straight up. Three breaths. Then release the arms, hands on hip. We're gonna lower down to um, the, the a low lunge. So you might wanna move your blanket back to get ready. You're going to all, you're gonna, you lift that hip up by rotating the foot. And if you want to grab your blocks, we should have done this at the beginning, forgive me. Place the blocks at the front of the mat so they're ready for you. And you can reach your hands forward to come to have the support of the blocks as you lower, or you can just use your strength and lower that knee to the floor gently. And then we find ourselves right away in the low lunge position. Let's take a moment to play here. First come to a nice strong, position. 
we're going to go through a, a little bit of a mini flow here. So let's take the arms into cactus for this. Or if, if you need to keep your arms, keep your hands on the blocks for support, of course you can. You have the freedom in your arms and balance to come up to cactus, please do. So first, let the weight come back towards that back knee. Feel these legs really pulling in towards each other and find this deep, deep strength reaching up, feeling your, feeling your belly very strong. Then bring the arms together in the front and let your weight come forward and release into the stretch. Back up with your strength, those legs pulling into each other. And exhale, release down. And up. And down. One more time. Strengthen and lift. Release into the stretch with your exhale. And take the hands onto the blocks or the floor. Wiggle that front foot forward and we'll take advantage of being in this position to come forward into a half honeymoon and address again the back of the extended leg. So your back very straight. Allow your long back with an exhale to come towards the, the torso, to come towards the leg. I like to visualize the head coming all the way to the foot to avoid that hunchy uh, fall forward. And feel the stretch in the back of the leg. Come to the place, adjust, and just as we did with that, that neck stretch, adjust in any way you can. Taking the hips slightly back or forward, making sure you, what the rotation of this leg and the hip socket the straight back, these hips working back, belly pulling in, what you need to do to help find that stretch in the back of your leg. And with an inhale, lift up, bend that front leg. Bring your weight onto that front leg as you step forward to the front of the mat and stand up again. One breath to lift the arms and hands come down. I'm going to come to the other side of the mat just for demonstration purposes. You don't necessarily have to change sides at all. Up to the front of the mat, we're going to step back into warrior one. And first find that strong warrior one position. Hip bones rotating to the front of the mat, long back of the pelvis, flat, and those hips kind of pull, as if you could pull your hip bones together. So there's a nice broad support at the back of your pelvis, the arms lift. If, if you find your shoulders rising through your ears, you can adjust the position of your arms to a more open position and find some more room for your shoulder blades there. Three breaths in warrior one. Lift the hands and bring them back down through the center to the hips, I'm going to come to the low lunge. So lift the heel, rotating the foot and using your blocks. If you want some support, you lower slowly to the floor. And we'll go through the little flow between the strong lifted mini lunge, low lunge. Let's take the arms to cactus again. Feeling those legs pulling in towards each other, the belly very strong, shoulders and face can be relaxed. And then exhale and come forward into the deeper lunge, feeling the pull on the front of your thigh. 
lift and engage and relax and lower. Lift and engage and relax and lower. One more time. Inhale strong and then exhale and soften. And straighten towards that back position, that strong one, and stretch that front leg out with the toes lifted. So we're really got the whole back of the leg extended and we'll come forward into the half Hanuman. Again, imagining, envisioning your long straight back reaching towards laying flat on your leg. Someday, right? Doesn't have to be now, but that's what we're reaching towards. So our body is forming with that front leg and the torso, a very strong and beautiful V shape. And we kind of reach towards narrowing the angle of that V. I like to extend my back with the inhale Feel my back long and with the exhale, pull in my belly and stretch my the sitting bones at my front leg back to re-engage that stretch. All right, now lift with your in-breath, bend that front leg and let your weight come into that front leg as you push forward and stand up. Back to, um, back to mountain pose. And a deep breath in mountain pose, lift the arms and bring them through. This time we're going to step back and open all the way into warrior two. So way back, wide open stance. The orientation of the hips shifts to the long edge of the mat. And we work this front knee open and back, rolling this back hip under. The arms lift into a long, strong warrior two. The shoulder, rotate your hands open for a moment. See if that helps you relax your shoulders down. And then you can flip them back. Or if it's easier for you to keep the shoulders down with the palms lifted, do so. Look over that front hand. Let's stay here for five breaths if we can. If you need to come out sooner, please do. If you need to come in and out, that's just fine. We're working on strength a little bit here. So feel those feet and legs pushing into the floor. At the same time, the legs are pulling towards each other. And lift those arms up. Rotate the heels and toes forward to forward fold. And we'll take the block with us here and fold. Take up the first forward fold. We haven't even done Uttanasana, so here we are at Pasparita, et cetera, et cetera. So straighten the back. Come to that flat back fold to begin with. If you don't want to have that slight inversion, you can just reach your feet away from each other and stay here. If the inversion is okay for you, you can release down and feel that stretch all through the back and the legs. Let your weight help you relax down. The weight of your torso, the weight of your head. You can take your hands in towards your feet, if appropriate, whatever works for you today. Make sure that the outside of your feet are still pressing into the floor. Your legs remain strong. Let's all come back to the flat fold at the beginning. 
engage the belly, maybe take a couple of wiggles in with your feet, then lift back to standing. We can rotate the feet the other direction by rotating the front foot. For me, it's the left parallel with the mat and then turning the toes of the opposite leg. This is the side I'm taking a smaller stance on today to make warrior two. Open the arms and let the head come over that front arm. Again, use your breath. We'll hold this for a moment. As you hold a pose to help keep your mind with your body, see what you can do with the pose. Can you feel those feet on the floor, pushing into the floor, those legs pulling in towards each other? Is the belly lifted and the shoulders relaxed? Just like a dancer holding a pose on stage, they're constantly improving it and tweaking it, staying with it. The pose grows and improves as they hold it. One more breath. If you need to come out, of course you come out and straighten that front leg, hands on hips. Again, rotate the feet forward. Let's take, this time let's take the feet with the toes reaching out in an angle so we can come into horse pose. So for horse pose, we relax down, take that bum down, the legs out, the knees out, and come into a comfortable, kind of slouchy horse pose. We're on a long ride here. We're not English riders, we're cowboys. Cowboys on the range. So just wiggle a moment and find your position. Arms are straight and strong. The chest and belly are still lifted. We're not giving up, but we're relaxing down a little bit, relaxing down into the hips. And when you get there, see if you can find a little trunk rotation by dipping one shoulder at a time, keeping the lip, keeping the arms straight and rotating the spine. Taking both, both directions. We do this with the forward straddle fold sometimes and the arms straight. It's the same motion. Perhaps this is a little smaller. It's just a little different, working a little differently. Accessing different corners of our bodies. And then let's, from here, let's straighten up towards goddess pose. This is the difference I think of them. The goddess pose is more lifted and erect. And then straighten the legs. Let's do that three times. Take the hips down as the legs open away and push up. Hips down. Push through and lift. And that's all I can do today. You can do one more if you want. I was gonna do three, but my body says, no, I can't do three of those right now. So you do the third one if you can. And we'll meet here, then place the toes forward. And let's step to the top of the mat again. We're going to come into some balance work. So you can take the um, blanket off your mat and find your support. I use this mantel piece. You can use whatever is convenient. A wall is perfect, any convenient wall, a chair, a counter. And when I say balance, I'm, I'm usually talking about one-legged balance. We balance all the time in yoga. But I like to do some one-legged poses just for, um, for really specific uh, focus balance work. So allow the weight to come into the, to the leg that's on the side by your, uh, your balance mechanism, minus this wall, and the other leg becomes light. And this time we're going to, I should just place your hands on your hips. You can have your balance, use your balance as much as you need to, your balance prop, and lift that knee towards the chest. 
hold, and then see if you can take that same bent leg straight back. And hold. Lift it as high as you can and back. Torso stays straight. Let's bring it forward one more time. And lift. And then we're going to take it behind us. And poke that foot up towards the sky. And bring it to the front and take it to the side, opening just as we would for tree pose from the hip to the side and hold it there. Now from here, straighten the leg. And then the leg. Let's take it to the front and straighten the leg. Hold if you can and bend. Then we'll take it to the back and straighten the leg. Lift it if you can, and then lower. Take a moment. Work out the hips. Then bend that front leg, reach back, find your foot. Let's give it a little stretch through the front of the quads. This is a perfect place to take your, your, um, your belt or your belt prop. To pull that leg back and release and come to the other side. So we'll do the same sequence on the other side, strengthening the standing leg and lifting the working leg. Balance as much as is possible for you. You always have your balancing prop. Look for a dristy or a focal point in front of you. Lift the leg back. And forward. Oops, there it goes. And back. Feel those muscles working, yeah. And forward, engaging the glutes as we go back. Pushing, poking that heel up towards the ceiling. Then forward and open it to the side. Then stretch that leg long to the side. Ouch, and then bring it in. Sometimes that really cramps your leg. If so, see if you can really push that heel away. That will help with that cramping. If it gets to be too much, you're done with that. And reach back and reach out. And release, integrate, grab that heel and stretch the front of the quadriceps. Many times when you feel a cramp or a pinch, oh, it's from gripping. And sometimes gripping is the appropriate mechanism for a pose, and sometimes it's not. But anytime you have that cramp, you wanna to try to release that grip. And sometimes the um, visual of lengthening or pushing away rather than compressing and pulling in will be a help. Let's work our way to the floor, all the way down now. I have one more arm release I want to do. And if you can find, again, you can use a chair for this if it's hard to set up in a seated position. Um, <coughs> but if, if you're fine in a seat, find your, find your Sukhasana, or, the, or any uh, convenient and comfortable seat. And take a moment to arrive here. We've been standing and doing some strength work, working with the legs a lot today. I'm gonna read this off before we, while we do this one. This is an upper arm and a shoulder stretch. And I'm going to show it to you. And it's going to be very different for everybody. And especially if you're, a muscular person with a lot of shoulder strength. This is a little bit of a challenge, but it's really good for you. So start by taking the right arm straight up and then bend from the elbow and let that arm drop back. Now take the left arm 
and take hold of that elbow and see if you can gently encourage that elbow towards the ceiling. Don't be, you don't wanna do a lot. You're just looking for the place where the stretch is. You may actually find that this hand, this back hand is touching your back. That means you're really open there and that's great. But if that doesn't happen, it's not a problem. That's why we're doing this because most people aren't really open there. Now the difficult part of this stretch or the challenging and interesting part is here. You're gonna take your, take your strap in this hand and hold on to it as you bend back. So we've been here, we know how this feels. Now take the opposite arm behind you and we're going to reach back for the strap. I shouldn't have a purple strap and a purple shirt on, it's hard to see. I'm gonna reach back and grab that strap. You may grab this strap, this may be your stretch right here. And what, we're going, what you're going to do is walk the bottom hand up the strap to find your stretch. So those two hands are working towards each other and eventually sometimes you can reach your hands together and hold on to your hands, but that's not necessary to get the stretch. The stretch is a nice challenge. If it is too much for you, you can stop this move right now and look at it, consider it and visualize it for yourself. Then we'll release the hands. Some shoulder circles, and we'll do the same moves on the other side. Now, for everyone, even if that, even if the total stretch when you got there was like, that's silly, this doesn't work in my body, I'm not doing this, fine, no worries. But it, everybody can do this part. You reach that left arm up, you bend that arm back, and you explore what's in this joint today. How far up and back can this go? You want to do this without taking the head way forward. So if that's what's happening, you may need to adjust so you don't need to move your head. And take some breaths here and just feel as that shoulder opens in this peculiar direction. And then moving on, if appropriate, you take the strap in that lifted hand, let it come down your back, then the opposite arm in back of you and reach for the strap. And just grab whatever you can on that strap. If you have a stretch right here, you stay right here. If you can do more, you walk your bottom hand up the strap and feel what happens. This is a very powerful stretch, so we're going to be careful with it. You do it with Ahimsa, loving kindness. And this is the same stretch we do with Gomukhasana, which is the cow face pose. We're not going to um, do that right now. I'm just gonna demonstrate where you cross your legs over each other and the arms do a similar or a reflective pose in the back. Then release the arms and come down onto your backs. We can do a pose similar to Gomukhasana or a pose that reaches the same muscle group. So after we stretch the shoulders in the Gomukhasana arms, we will come onto our backs and do figure four which accesses the same complex group of glute muscles as the Gomukhasana. Or actually, I have, a, I, have a, I have another to offer. So if you would like to do figure four, please go ahead. We stretch, bend the top leg over the knee of the opposite leg and reach that reach that um, knee away from you. And then you access more by coming into your thigh. If you'd like to try with Gomukhasana, you stretch, bring the legs up with knees bent 
and take them across each other. So we're crossed at the knees and reach up towards those legs and bring them down towards you. This is a really nice way to do Gomukhasana because you can control it very well. And uh, sometimes people can't get their knees flat on the floor. It doesn't matter if your knees are on the flat on the floor here because you can't, because they're up in the air. And then you pull those knees down towards your body, feeling that stretch right on the outside of the hip, very similar to figure four, but perhaps a little different, a little different access, a little different power. And feel what's going on. Send your breath into whatever sensation you have accessed here. And see if you can find a release, a softening in those very tight and subtle little areas of the, of the quad, of, I'm sorry, of the glutes. And release and either take figure four again. You can do it with your foot on the floor if this is a good stretch for you or reach through to the back of the thigh pulling those towards you, or you can go to the uh, other pose, the Gomakasana, by stretching, taking the knees up towards the chest and crossing other leg on top. This for me, is the right leg. I did the left leg first, right leg on top, and then reaching up towards your shins or your feet and pulling those legs towards you. Gomukhasana means cow face pose. And release. Let's take a twist to the side. I'm going to take a block up between my thighs, holding it up towards the groin. And this is a really nice move if you have a little bit of tenderness in the lower back. Welcome to join me with this. Bring your knees in towards the chest and let them fall to the left. I'm going to the left first. And when you have the block, it really helps keep you aligned. You can feel your, um, uh, you can feel your knees staying lined up with each other because you're pushing into that block and breathe into whatever stretch you find. It may be across the top of one of your shoulders, but you are getting that nice twist in your, in your lower body too, through all the organs. And after, as we release the twist, there's a flow of fresh blood that floods throughout those areas. And uh, that's one of the benefits of these twists. And with a strong belly, lift up to the center. You can adjust your hips if need be, and then let the knees fall to the other side. The full position would have your neck looking away from your knees. If your neck is comfortable with that, that's a nice addition. If your neck isn't comfortable, don't do that. And then with an inhale and a strong belly, bring those knees up, release the block. We're going to get ready to come to Shavasana. I would like to do one more back stabilizer before we do that. And the one I'm going to offer you is feet on the floor, knees up. Find a nice flat back on the floor. 
Then take the knees up into your hands and lift the feet towards tabletop position. One hand, I have the right hand on the front, the palm of my right hand on the top of my th of the thigh by my knee on the right leg and around the front of the knee on the left leg. And on the left leg, I'm going to pull that left leg in towards me as the leg works away. On the right hand, I'm going to push that leg away from me as the leg works towards me. So it's a little, sounds a little complicated, but it's kind of a push-pull uh, action. So one leg is working away, one leg is coming towards you, and the hands are opposing them. If this is too much uh, for your brain, you can take both legs and bend them and push your hands into them to push away as the legs work back. If you're doing this opposing work, then switch the positions of your hands. Don't think about it too much and that will help. And this really is a strengthening movement that helps that lower back and spine integrate and settle back flat onto the floor. Exhale, breathe as you're doing this work. And now release that. And you still have a moment. If there's one more pose you need, happy baby or another twist or full body stretch, please indulge yourself and then get ready and come to your Shavasana, your favorite Shavasana on your back with a blanket under your knees or blanket under your head. If you prefer to uh, lift, elevate your legs onto a chair or up the wall and you have that accessible, that's lovely. If you are happier on your side, you can take Shavasana in a fetal pose with your head supported. Whatever works for you to find a position where you can really release and relax onto the floor. Really find that long, gentle release. And as you come to Shavasana, let your, let your body relax. Let your body find the shape of the floor completely. Let the noises around you fade away, soften. Observe the breath and observe your body. Check in with any tension places, especially your jaw and your shoulder blades, your lower back, your belly, and give them whatever attention will help them flatten, release, let go for a while. I'm going to do the fall grounding reading for you as you settle in here. So let your breath lengthen. Find that quiet place within you. Sit down wherever you are and listen to the wind singing in your veins. Feel the love, the longing, the fear in your bones. Open your heart to who you are right now. Not who you would like to be, not the saint you are striving to become, but the being right here inside you, before you, around you. All of you is holy. You are already more and less than whatever you can know. Breathe out. Touch in, let go.
If you have time for a longer Shavasana and would like to stay, please ignore my voice, turn off your computer, just flip it closed, whatever, and enjoy that. If you need to be moving on with your day, you can start to find a deep breath again, be aware of your breath again, tune in to your body. Take whatever motions you need to start reorienting towards the room around you and the world around you. A breath, a wiggle, a stretch with the hands, the feet, the head. And when you're ready, take a deep breath and roll over to your right. Take another deep breath there, at least one, and come to join me in a seat. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for taking care of yourselves and hanging in through this long, long, crazy period, which we're not done yet. This adventure and challenge and mystery of our current lives. And take great care of yourselves. We need you, we love you. Namaste. And that's it. I am going to turn off the recording and if you would like to say hello or ask questions, please